Um, and I want to take the portion of this graph that goes from 0 to 8, and I want to spin this region around the x-axis. And I want to find the volume that that forms. Um, back to my low budget visual aids. So we need to know what shape the cross sections are when we spin this around. Now for volumes of revolution, our cross sections are always the same, kind of. If I start with the arbitrary cross section, that I would draw if I were just finding an area. And I take that arbitrary cross section, white is not a great color for me today. Um, if I take that arbitrary cross section and I spin it around the axis, then the shape we're gonna form, if I think about taking this and spinning it around the axis, the shape we form is a circle that has a little bit of thickness. which means our volume is still an area times the thickness. And our area is the area of a circle, pi r squared. And my thickness is a little bit of dx. I'd be integrating these by taking these slices as far to the left as x equals zero, and as far to the right as x equals 8. Now the question becomes, what is the radius? Now, my pictures get messy when I try to draw these in 3D, but I do want to give a little bit of a sense. So if I spin this around, we'd end up with something kind of like this, where I'd have these cross sections that are circles. Since what we need to figure out is an equation for our radius, my radius always starts in the center and goes till I hit an edge. So if I start in the center and I go until I hit an edge, this distance is the y value, but in particular it's the y value that corresponds with this function. So that radius piece would be x to the two-thirds squared. And in general, I'm going to find that radius by looking on our picture. I'm going to pause here for a second, and then I'm going to revolve around a different axis. I want to revolve that same thing around the y-axis. I'm going to need to take my cross-section perpendicular to the axis that I'm revolving around. So I'm going to take my cross-section just like that. And that cross-section, when I revolve it around the y-axis, and I know the white is hard to see, I'll try it down here, but if I imagine, here's my, here's my y-axis, and I'm revolving this around the y-axis, I still sweep out a circle. But this circle has a hole through the middle of it. So when I sweep this around, it's kind of like I end up with, This big circle and there's kind of a hole in the middle of it and so when I'm looking for the volume of this I look at this as that large circle so I'd have a volume that looked like 
a big circle, a big pi r squared, times a little bit of thickness. And in this case, that thickness is dy, because it's sort of the height of that arbitrary cross section, minus, and then we'd be punching out that little part inside. So that would be minus pi times the smaller radius times a little bit of thickness. And both of those I'd be integrating and integrating with respect to y. So we're going to have to figure out those y bounds. But I want to start with the radius. Now, our radius starts in the middle and goes until we hit a function. So if I think about for the smaller part that we're punching out, that hole that we're not going to have, if I start in the middle and I go until I hit the function, well, the function I'm hitting is y equals um, x to the two-thirds power. But this distance is not how far we've gone in terms of y. This distance is an x value. So this is that small radius is actually x equals y to the three halves power from rearranging this equation to say x equals. So our smaller radius down here would be y to the 3 halves power squared. And I'll just give myself an integral as a placeholder for a second. We'll figure out the bounds next. For my larger radius, that's going from the center till I hit the farthest edge of my arbitrary cross section. No matter which height I take this slice at, this outer edge is always a distance of 8 away from the center. So this edge is always x equals 8 for our picture. And I'm looking at pi times 8 squared dy. In terms of finding our bounds, I know that I would take these cross sections as low as y equals 0, but I need to know the y value to stop at. Since this is an x value of 8, if I plugged in 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, and squaring that I would get 4. So this point is the point 8, 4. And the bounds for our integral would go from 0 to 4. 